we're back. Hope the holidays were as lovely as they could have been, but now it is time to talk about three very cheap, very amazing headphones that you should definitely own at least one of. Let's do it. <laughs> so if you're not an audio person, don't worry. This is still gonna be 99% understandable for you. I'm gonna break it down in a very light way. Basically, there's this company called Koss, and Koss makes three pairs of headphones that the internet absolutely goes bananas for. They love all of them for different reasons, but they're all really, really good for $30 or less most of the time. And you're probably wondering, which one should I buy? Well, don't worry. I bought all three so that you don't have to. All right, so let's start out with build and comfort. And we're gonna start with the ugliest of the bunch, like objectively the ugliest of the bunch. They are called the KSC 75s. They are the least comfortable out of all three to me. You wanna listen for like a half hour quick session? Totally fine. You wanna wear these any longer than that? These are not your friend. If you're gonna take them off after a long time, you're gonna notice that your, your ears feel kind of pinched and they're just, to me, the clip-on method, not super comfortable. Plus, if you're like me and you take headphones on walks a lot, these are kind of gonna like bounce on your ears as you walk and I don't know, the feeling of that is kind of weird. It makes your ears feel like big and floppy and dumb. I don't know, could be a dumb complaint, but it's just something I noticed. The wire here, it's okay. It's not the best thing in the world, but I'm more worried about where it connects to the plastic because that kind of seems like a bit of a weak point if it gets tugged on or anything. So I guess just be careful with that. The pads are normal. They're just okay. Keep in mind, I'm making a bunch of build quality like nitpicks here, but these headphones are really, really cheap. So like, it doesn't mean a whole lot. Like a lot of the stuff is pretty passable to me. When we get onto sound quality later, they kind of justify themselves a little more in that respect. So moving on to these 80s looking headphones, they're called the Porta Pros. I got them in this pimp colorway, obviously, because that's my, that's who I am, I'm kidding. So they are obviously very different from the KSC 75s in form factor. They don't clip on at all, and thankfully so. The adjustable metal headband is pretty nice, but I could definitely see if you have like some wild crazy hair, like, or even just some decent length hair, a lot of it getting caught in that kind of headband, so keep that in mind. The plastic that holds this whole rig together is definitely of higher quality than the KSU 75s. It's a little textured, it's a little better, and they're pretty damn comfy. They have obviously like regular, normal ear pads, like nothing special about those, but it also has these little like temple pads for your head to add extra support and comfort. The key though is that it has this comfort zone adjustment where you can kind of adjust the clamp force from firm to not so firm. And so I think like with the combination of like two sets of pads and this little, this little slider thingy, I would say this is the most universally comfortable out of all three. The wire is a little spaghetti-ish, but after the microphone, it kind of gets to a thickness where I feel more confident about it. They also fold in really small, and it's great because you can just throw them in a pouch and be on your way. None of these other headphones have any sort of like portability features in mind, so this is super appreciated. Okay, now on to the Arthur in the Library Reading Rainbow type headphones, the KPH30Is. Each side is adjustable via the headband. You just kind of slide some plastic up and down on each side, which is, everyone knows that method, very familiar so it works and it also has a silicon comfort strap on the on the little headband which is super nice they totally didn't have to do that and it makes it feel lighter than it actually is when you when you put it on your head the plastic is probably smack in the middle in terms of quality between what's on the 75s and the Porta Pros. But that being said, I would say it's a that's a pretty good balance. I was happy with it. These pads cover the most of your ear, like in terms of surface area out of all three. And I think there's extra points to be earned for that too, because that kind of feels pretty comfortable. And the wire here is definitely like, in my opinion, far and away, the best out of all three. It's probably also worth noting that the 75s and the Porta Pros both have right angle connectors, which might be a little more convenient when you hook it up to your dongle for your phone or whatever, but the KPH30Is have a straight connector. So I don't know, just something to keep in mind. Doesn't bother me either way on any of them. For me, if we're talking about comfort and build balance, like the best combination of both, I would have to give it to the KPH30Is because I think they're the least offensive <laughs> in what they do. And you'll see that as a theme as we go along. Also worth noting is that the KPHs, they come with the mic. The Porta Pros, there's a version with a mic and a version without a mic. The 75s though, no mic, unless you go get them from a site called The Drop or Mass Drop. And there's a version there in a less ugly black with a different wire, but it has a microphone. So if that's your thing, check that out. Okay, so basically this is how I see it. At this point in the review, it doesn't make any sense for me at all to continue criticizing anything that's not sound quality about these headphones because they are so, so, so cheap, all three of them, 
that it would just be noticing where they cut corners. It would just be me, me pointing out really small flaws. So at this point, it just depends on what music you listen to and what kind of sound you like. So let's get right into sound quality. So let's circle back to the 75s for a minute. The 75s, if you've never owned a pair of really, really nice headphones before, they're gonna give you that most wow factor. You're gonna be like, oh my God, like the amount of detail on the high end there is crazy. Let me contextualize this frequency response graph. I know it looks a little scary, but it's it's really not. So basically, there's not a ton of low end here. So, you know, if you're like a hip hop head or you're like a modern bass head, these are definitely not for you. The mids are handled pretty nicely. They're pretty smooth. I don't really have a problem with the mids. The highs here, now that's where the magic is. This whole Swiss Alps little thing happening in the highs, that's what makes these headphones kind of special. If you're listening to like rock, R&B, like, I don't know, jazz, bedroom pop, indie, like anything that is centered around a lot of acoustic natural instruments, you're gonna start hearing some stuff in your music that you may have not heard before, which is a really, really cool phenomenon to like, just experience for the first time. Symbols are crisper, vocals are more detailed, guitars kind of just sound clearer. I just love what this does for natural instruments. Like even jazz, like I said before, sounds as intricate and like clear and detailed as it's supposed to be. So two major drawbacks with these headphones, right? The first being lack of low end. The second being sibilance. Now, what's sibilance? It's kind of exactly how it sounds. It's kind of the sound that you know any good producer or mix engineer or whatever who's working on a track will do their best to take out but these headphones you know the swiss alps thing that we were looking at earlier that kind of eq curve kind of lends itself to siblings sometimes when you have like a female vocal like unfortunately the female vocal range kind of just naturally sits or the sibilance of it rather naturally sits in that range so you do have some sibilance issues but i wouldn't say it's overwhelming and i wouldn't say it like ruins any listening experience for the most part this uh bumpy high-end eq that you have going on works in favor of the headphones and it makes it sound a lot better so moving on to the Porter Pros. The sad thing with the Porter Pros is, like I was really hoping, I would really, really like how they sounded because the form factor for me, like the ability to fold it up, like the portability, even the look, the comfort, like I was ready to be in love with the Porter Pros, but with how they sound, I just cannot justify it. They don't sound bad. At first I did think they sounded bad, but then I just realized I needed to do a little more digging to see what kind of tracks made them sound good? Like what, what brings out the best of these Porter Pros? For me, there's just too much low end. If you like modern hip hop or EDM, you're gonna have a fun time with these because these will pack a punch, the punch that you're probably looking for. But for me, it's just a little overwhelming. But here's my gripe with the Porter Pros, right? If you look at their graph now, we see we have some high bass boosting going on and we also have some low treble boosting going on. And then we have some very selective treble EQ. This for me results in like a very heavy, harsh, like punchy sound, but like almost to the point of it messing with the balance of things and songs. Yeah, it's harsh and punchy, which might be fun for some things. I genuinely get that. But for me, it didn't do a lot of the stuff that I listened to any justice. Like I listened to a bunch of like indie rock and R&B and like I'll put some names up on the screen here. It just did not do any of these people justice. And I don't know, I just wasn't a fan of how this stuff sounded. But then as always, I remembered something I read on Reddit before purchasing these headphones. And I think someone said like, if you play music from when the Porter Pros were actually made, like the era, they will sound really good. And I was like, that probably makes a lot of sense. So the Porter Pros were made in 84. I went to my friend's 80s and stuff that was made now that's trying to be 80s makeup playlist. And I just shuffled through that a whole bunch while wearing the Porter Pros. And lo and behold, they sounded really good. I was like, I think I audibly said, oh, like I, I understood what they were going for. My theory with this is just, you know, back then, I don't think we were all on this like bass addiction that we're on now, right? You know, producers nowadays and, and mixing and master engineers like really make full use of the entire frequency spectrum, especially the low end. And I think we're like accustomed nowadays to modern music having really well-crafted low end, but it just extends further than it used to, if that makes sense. So when you apply the Porter Pro EQ that seemingly like boosts all this bass and modern stuff to 80s and even 90s stuff, it sounds really good because it's like you apply that EQ to an 80s kick drum and it sounds punchy and thumpy and like exactly how you want it and perfect. But you apply that Porter Pro EQ to a modern kick drum, it's like overwhelming, it's like boom. Like it's just, you get what I'm trying to say. It's made for the 80s. Okay, and now on to what you can probably guess by process of elimination is my favorite pair, the KPH 30 eyes. So for sound, imagine here like a pretty neutral sound that avoids the sins of the Porter Pros and the 75s simultaneously. The bass, 
so 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 smooth it makes a lot of drum kits sound really good really full warm punchy anything from r&b to indie to all really good bass the mids the mid highs and the low treble tastefully quelled in a way where you can turn these headphones up a lot and not be bothered i don't think i've ever thought anything sounded too piercing at a high volume on the 30 eyes which is fantastic sibilance total non-issue maybe not total non-issue but very mostly a non-issue they don't have the sparkle and the shine that you're gonna get at the 75s. But occasionally, a very small amount of times, there is a little bit of that sparkle where you need it. And I think that might be a better way of doing it. I think that's why these end up being so versatile. And if you're a bass head, these aren't gonna blow you away. But I think it's definitely at least adequate. These headphones do the best job across the board. I don't think I've ever thought that they have made any track sound worse than I had previously known that it sounded. I think it has only made them sound how I expected them to sound or better. That's something most headphones can't really say. The conclusion here, here's the conclusion, KSC 75s. Very cool for high-end detail. If you've never had high-end headphones and you get a taste of this, you're gonna be like, wow. But at the same time, so focused on high-end that I think, you know, you're missing out on other elements and it can actually be a little overkill in some songs with female vocals because you have some sibilance issues. I just think they're really fun. If you already own good headphones or any one of these headphones that we just talked about already, buying these, I think you'll actually feel like there's a purpose to owning them. It's not just like another pair of good headphones. They're like specifically good at something that you'll want to pick them up for. I'm gonna get a lot of heat for saying this, but the biggest tragedy in headphones to me because how they look and how they fold up and all the ergonomics, I adore. I love it all. But the sound, it's just, it's not for me. It's not for me. I know it's for other people and other people love them, but it's just not for me. And it's not versatile enough. I would say maybe get these if you listen to pre-2000 stuff, stuff that was originally mastered before 2000. If that's you, like I said, I'm jealous. Get those headphones and those, those are gonna be just fine for you. The KPH30i Reading Rainbow Arthur in the Library headphones, best all-arounder. I can't fault them for anything. You could say maybe, comparably, they sound a little sterile, but honestly, that's what makes them such good all-rounders. That's what makes them good at everything. They're good at everything. And they have a mic and a good wire and a good silicon comfort strap. So that's my recommendation to you. I think tier list goes KPH30Is, 75s for fun, Porter Pros for oldies, and that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed and hopefully you pick up one of these because music is fun and listening to music in different ways is fun. And all of these are great. If you just have AirPods, I promise you, this is gonna be a different, fun, better experience for you. Like give it a try. Anyway, that's been it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.